Thanks for joining me for this video where we're gonna be talking about consumer buying strategies, specifically utilizing MPV. So one of the things that we have to do as consumers is we have to evaluate different options. And sometimes those options are not expressed in equal terms. So we're gonna be using the net present value formula as a way to help us make a decision if we should purchase a particular item. We're gonna be comparing the cost of the purchase with the uh, quantifiable benefits that we will receive from some purchase. Now, I understand that not everything is quantifiable, but there are certain things that are, and it can help us to make a decision as to whether or not a purchase ultimately makes sense for us. Uh, so for starters, let's create a scenario that we can work with to use the formula and then do our analysis. So we are gonna start by purchasing a washer. So we believe that purchasing a wash gonna provide us with, or a new one rather, is gonna provide us with a number of benefits. However, there are some costs associated with that. The main cost is upfront, of course, and that's gonna be purchasing the unit, which will cost us $850. Now, based upon our analysis, uh, because the washer is much more efficient, uh, because it will save us time, because it has an increased load capacity, we've determined that we're going to get an annual savings from using this washer of $176, and this is per year. Now, in terms of evaluating this decision, there has to be a time frame that we're going to evaluate it. And so we want to see if this makes sense for us, assuming a useful life of six years. And so this is what is going to be the number of periods that we're going to evaluate this particular loan. And then we also need an interest rate. Now, you're probably wondering, why do we need an interest rate for this equation? Well, we need something to determine what the present value of our savings is. And so what I commonly, what we commonly want to use is what is essentially like an everyday interest rate that we'd be able to earn on our money. So if we weren't going to put this money in a washer, how much could we actually earn? And so let's just say that we believe that that is a 3% interest rate, that if we weren't going to purchase the washer, we would have the ability to generate 3% on our money if we chose to do so. It just helps us kind of consider the opportunity cost, of course. So let's kind of show how this is going to work from a, a timeline standpoint. So over here, I'm going to show really graphically what we're kind of trying to accomplish here. And so we are going to be evaluating this decision over six years. And these are the each the number of years. And the upfront cost is going to be $850. This is how much it's going to cost us initially. However, we're going to save $176 each year. So what we're trying to determine is collectively if these each of these $176 in savings each and every year, how that compares to this original $850. Now there's a couple problems with this uh, equation. The main thing is that this or $176, we don't earn it at the same time, so it has differing values. So essentially what we're trying to figure out is if the present value of these $176 savings, do they actually exceed our initial investment of $850? It's essentially what we're trying to do. If it does, then that means that this is a good decision. This is something that uh, would not only would add a layer of convenience, but obviously from a financial standpoint, makes sense on paper. Now, if the collective uh, the uh, collective present values of each of these future savings does not exceed the initial upfront investment of 850, then the project is less uh, of a certainty. Uh, it would require some additional analysis. So that's basically how we utilize or what we are essentially trying to do. Now, fortunately, we don't have to do everything by hand. We can use a pretty handy formula to make this decision. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, too, is that we can also use a financial calculator, which would make plugging things in much simpler. But I'm assuming that you don't have one, and so we're going to use just a simple table. So for starters, let's walk through the existing formula. So the formula to calculate NPV is actually going to be our annual 
savings multiplied by what we call our present value ratio and I'll explain how you can locate this or let's say our present value factor subtract our initial investment or initial cost and that's really it so part of this information we know we obviously have access to the annual savings and of course our initial cost the present value factor is something that we're not aware of at this point in time so what I'm going to show you real quick on the screen is a present value uh, table and this this particular present value table is of a dollar received at the end of each period for a given number of time periods which would refer to an annuity since it's a consistent amount of payments now that's similar to what we're doing because we're getting this in theory, $176 as savings each year, which therefore makes it an annuity because it's a regular stream of payments. If it was, if we did not incorporate these savings, then it would just simply be a lump sum. So you want to make sure that you're pulling the right formula. But if you look here at the very, very top of the formula, you can see that on one axis you have the percentages. These are the interest rates. And then as you move down on the left-hand side in that left-hand column under period, that is the number of periods. In our case, we're using six for the number of years. So all you simply have to do is to match up the actual column where your percentage is, and then go down to the row where we see our number of periods. So we're gonna find 3%, which is in the, I guess it'd be the fourth column, and then we're gonna go down to six, which is technically the seventh row, if you include kind of that top row there, which means that our, our present value factor is 5.417. Okay, so that's what we're going to use as the present value factor. So let's go ahead and fill the information in. So we know that we're solving for MPV and our annual savings is 176. And we are going to multiply that by our present value factor, which we found to be 5.417. And then we're going to subtract our initial investment or initial cost, which is 850. Now, just moving the equation down, solving for in parentheses first, $176 multiplied by that present value factor of 5.417 actually gets us $953.39 if we round uh, to the nearest hundredth. And then we can subtract our $850 investment and we're going to get $103.39 total. So this is essentially our MPV. Now, technically with MPVs, right, it usually works kind of like a hypothesis. So if your MPV is greater than zero, uh, usually that equals what we call an acceptable project. And MPV, just so you know, is utilized a lot in business, particularly for larger decisions where we're trying to see projected cash flows for many, many years. And obviously you're dealing with much higher investments and those sorts of things, and they can get much more, much more uh, complicated. But typically if an MPV is greater than zero, it's an acceptable project. Likewise, if it's less than zero, it's usually not a very desirable project. And in the extent to which it exceeds zero, it obviously gets much more beneficial for the recipient, of course. So from the context of our example here, if we're trying to make a decision as to whether to, uh, let's just say, quote unquote, invest in this new washer, assuming, of course, that we're going to receive a $176 excuse me, dollar savings each year for six years, assuming, of course, that our sort of opportunity costs on this investment is the 3% that we would earn on this money in which we're discounting it by 3% each and every year here. So assuming those things, this particular washer would actually provide us with a savings of $953.39, thus exceeding that upfront investment of $850. So hopefully that's helpful. Obviously, if you're using MPV for your own personal situation, then you're going to want to spend some time trying to figure out the savings. Ultimately, I don't think it's really about being 100% accurate, and really it's probably not possible to do that because there's frankly 
unknown unknowns when we're doing these calculations, uh, but it could help you get a little bit closer and ultimately provide another data point for you to be able to make a much more informed decision. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.